Hi guys, welcome to my channel. That's my first video. And I'm actually a math student in UCL now, major in chemical physics. Today, I would like to talk about some knowledge about linear man batteries and some knowledge about my research project. Mm -hmm. It's my honor to be here. Let's begin. At first, mm, I think everyone of us know the linear batteries, but not all of us know the mechanism of the linear batteries. As they as a little different from the traditional batteries, they don't have to, uh, I think the topic uh, chemical reactions in the linear batteries instead of light. Uh, it depends on the transport of the linear ions between the anode and cathode during the charging and discharging process. And during the light, the electrodes can go outside between the anode and the cathode and to give the power outside. It's really easy to understand. And on the uh, right, you can see the advantages of our linear batteries. There are so many advantages, such as high energy density, high open voltage up to 3.3 to 4.2 voltage. It's, it's quite high, but I think they can do 4.5 or 4.6 voltage. And it also have high of potent power. It can be very useful in the electro cars. I will talk that detailly in the later. And they can such as the low memory effects, the low self discharge. I will talk that later. And then uh, why we need to develop the high performance linear batteries? I think the most important area is the uh, electro vehicles, the EVFs. You can see the picture of the UAS battery packs. Uh, the battery system is the most important companies of the UAS. Uh, depends the performance and cost of the UAS. Uh, depend developer the UAS can be very useful. Can help us to protect our environmental, our atmosphere. You can see the oil quantity. Uh, between the last few years, when we uh, when the increase with the increase of the UVS, our uh, air quality decrease increase rapidly. So I think um, the UVS can be very useful in our to protect our world. So I will then I will talk about the companies of the linear batteries. They have uh, five main companies of the linear structure. Uh, it includes the chiral material, the separator, the anode materials, the organic, electrolyte, and the battery cells. I think the most important thing is the canode materials. The canode materials control the, the whole performance and the cost of the linear batteries. You can say that the chiral material takes almost 40% cost of the whole batteries, so it's very useful. If we want to get high potential linear batteries, we should get high High, high potential and high performance carrier materials. And we also want to get the lower cost of the carrier materials. Uh, you will care what is the uh, care about the uh, carrier materials. So what kind of materials can be used as a near battery carrier? On this picture, you can find that. Uh, on the left, you can see some. Um, Periodic, uh, period, uh, period, period of the linear battery is chiral materials. And I would say that there are three main chiral materials. The first one is the linear ox oxidized, represented by the linear cobalt. It's very used and industrialized that you know. It's very useful. Mm -hmm. The smartphones, linear batteries, it use the cobalt, uh, linear cobalt. But using of the cobalt elements is very bad. You know, it's um, polluting our environment and uh, can cost a lot and hard to recycle or reuse. The second material says spin or uh, oxidized, represented by the near magnesium. The near magnesium awarded the using of cobalt elements, but the synthesis performance of these materials is still in nature. That means it's hard for us to industrialize the materials. And the second, I think, is most important and most useful <laughs> carrier materials is the Neiman phosphate LFP materials. That all ties a uh, new research hotspot of the linear batteries, kind of the materials. And it's also my target of my research project. So then I will talk about some um, detail about the minimum phosphate, about the LFP. You can see some advantages and disadvantages of the LFP. I can say that those are so many advantages, such as high theoretical capacity almost to 170 is it's high enough to give the power to the electrical cars. 
and it's very safe, have a long lifespan. It's also high, it's also pollution free and uh, has good charging performance. But I'll say that some disadvantages that add poor electrical connectivity and also some poor diffusion rate of the neon batteries. These two characteristics uh, seriously limited the applications in high performance electro cars. That means we should make some modification to our LFP materials. During the last few years, after the development of LFP materials, there are three, there are so many modification measures to increase the performance of our LFP. You can say that there are three main planification of LFP materials. And on the left is a carbon coating. The carbon coating is a well most used, uh, usedly uh, modification method. Uh, the connectivity carbon will co coat it on the surface of the materials. It can improve the electro conductivity of the materials. It also can increase the electro conductivity between the particles in uh, the cathode. It can help a lot. The second is the size control on the right. Yeah, it's on the right. The, uh, when we, we can use the nanoparticle LFP it's, uh, for the big one. The nanoparticles can shorten the diffusion portion of the neon ions, can increase the, the diffusion rate of the neon ions and improve the correct uh, charging and discharging performance. It, it can also help. But I will talk about the most important modification as a lesson again, in, my, uh, in, my thing, in my brain, yeah. Uh, the doping modification, I think do, uh, the doping modification means they can doping some other elements to our RFP, such as so many, such as magnets, such as cobalt, uh, you know, the cobalt is very bad, such as uh, nickel and other uh, so many uh, materials, but uh, so many uh, elements, but it can uh, helps for it to increase the not only increase the diffusion rate and the connectivity, but also reduce the internal resistance of the cells. It can also increase the cycling and other performance of the materials. So I think doping modification is very useful. And uh, in my research project, I chose the magnets. Magnets can help a lot. Yeah, you can say the reason why I chose the magnets. Magnets can not only improve in the energy density. By almost twenty percent, can also increase the uh, improving the structure stability. You know the LMP, LMP materials uh, seems uh, have same structure, but we are buy to use as the carbon materials. Uh, this can be um, the reason why the LMP is poor because the this dissolution of magnets ions and the gentile effects of our magnets. But when we drop in the magnets to our FP, it can increase and improve the stability, the stable of uh, stability of our materials. And also it can it can increase the in, in low temperature performance. You know that when you have an electric car, when you drive that uh, in the winter, it not work very good because the uh, low temperature uh, is a uh, the LFP, the LFP materials have not a good low temperature performance, but the magnet stopping can help a lot. That's the reason why I chose magnet stopping. And also I will talk about some exp experimental details about my research project. I chose four different models of magnets to drop in the LFP. You can say that to almost uh, to uh, from 65 to almost 80% of magnets, you know, there are so, uh, a lot of magnets instead of the iron. So I think uh, I would like to talk about the performance of that. Uh, I guess uh, the first one, the 65 magnets doping can be the most uh, useful materials. And uh, below, you can see the heat treatment temperature and heat treatment, heat treatment time. I think the heat treatment temperature uh, will help a lot. And uh, you can see the machine that I use in UCL to heat treat my uh, materials. And uh, below the structure and the environmental characteristics, I use such as the XRD, XRF, IPS, BET. If you are interested in that, I will make a, a more video about that. You can see that below is my materials after heat treatment. 
I think the, they are different colors. You can say that from black to almost red. The red one, I think, is is useless. It can't be mixed as sales because they're having so many impurities. But the black one, I think, is useful. I will do that to make it uh, as a sales to get more details about their performance. And on the right, you can say the XRD patient. The XRD patient, maybe you have don't know about that. The XRD, I will use that to de- decide which one, which material, say the face pro is uh, pro hourish MP, and which one has some impurities. Uh, the one I guess having the, the impurities one I guess is um, maybe not good. Uh, it can they don't have a high performance, I guess. And uh, you can see the two pictures that on the, on the left is a uh, printing kind uh, of uh, the printing has load. Uh, we use the materials of uh, FMP with other things such as the PVDF is the boner of our materials and the aluminum foil to get the carrot and also some carbon black to in, to uh, also to improve our electrical connectivity, I guess. And we will cut, uh, cut the, some the printing catalog and uh, to get the catalog piece, we can use that to use that as a catalog in our cool cells, yes. We, we make the cool cells instead of the big batteries in our lab. You can see the cool, the cool cells, uh, some different a company com, of the cone cells as a uh, uh, cathode and load separator. The most uh, the cathode materials is actually we made and we print and cut. And I know that the neon metals I think is can help a lot. And uh, the whole things, the whole uh, process to make the cone cells will be do in the glove box. The glove box I would say that is I feel uncomfortable in that it's, you know, it feel it not feel good. But if you are interested in that, I will make a, a video to tell you how to uh, work uh, in the glove box and how to make a cone cells. That's all. That's my first video. Thank you.